From economic angst to an historic divide, America's most famous internal boundary is one that can't be seen today, but along which this country once tore itself apart. The Mason-Dixon line. In the Civil War, it came to signify the border between North and South as it separated slave-owning Maryland from free Pennsylvania. As part of our week-long series marking the 150th anniversary of the Civil War, our reporter Zoe Conway visited three businesses operating on the line to find out what it represents today. Abraham Lincoln once said that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yet, this one has stood divided for two and a half centuries. My left foot is in Pennsylvania. So we can have breakfast in Pennsylvania. We can have here. breakfast, yes. And your right foot is in Maryland. B Waybright's B&B is split in two by the Mason-Dixon line, the border separating Pennsylvania in the north and Maryland in the south. Most guests like the idea of crossing the state line to take a shower. But for one prospective guest, it was a step too far. She goes, oh, no, I will not stay in Pennsylvania. Why do you think she didn't want to stay in Pennsylvania? I don't know. It's probably something to do from the Civil War. In the basement, a gruesome reminder of what the Civil War was fought over. And you can see where they were actually attacked to the wood. On this beam was secured a slave pen. At night, they were locked up um, in four by six pens. And they were kept on the Maryland side? They were kept on the Maryland side. Um, actually, Pennsylvania was a free state. The Mason-Dixon line was drawn by two British surveyors, Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon. Their mission, to settle a colonial-era land dispute. Each mile, they marked the border with an English quarry stone. Mason and Dixon used the stars to guide where they put these markers. What they couldn't have imagined was what this limestone would come to represent. How nearly 100 years later, it would symbolise a country divided. It was just to the north of the line, here at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where the bloodiest battle of the Civil War was fought. In these fields, the Southern, or Confederate, army was forced to retreat, humiliated. On the corner of the battlefield, Florence Tarbox runs a b and I think there's a tremendous north-south divide. Florence gets visitors from all over America. She's struck by how many are still coming to terms with what happened. So what would you say to somebody who said, oh, Civil War, 150 years ago, America's moved on? I would say that was absolutely not true because every issue that we were talking about during the Civil War and fighting over, we're still talking about. We're still trying to resolve the tension between the states and the federal government. The whole issue about race in the United States, it's not over. <laughs> How much longer will it be till we cross that Mason-Dixon line? You don't have to go very far over the Mason-Dixon line to get the flavour of the Deep South, or to find a clear opinion on what being Southern means. I fight for what I believe in, and I fight to the death. You couldn't have possibly had a civil war if the Southerners were namby-pamby about, well, it's OK, let the North do what they want. They literally kicked butt until Gettysburg. That those emotions should still run so deep one and a half centuries later suggests William Faulkner was right when he said, the past is not dead. In fact, it's not even past. Zoe Conway, BBC News on the Mason-Dixon line. Wonderful stuff.